Hi, everyone. Jonathan Alexander here with the Los Angeles Review of Books, and I am absolutely thrilled today to have Sigrid Nunez join me. She is the author of numerous books, but most recently, uh, The Friend from 2018 and What Are You Going Through, which came out earlier this year. Uh, the Friend, I'm sure some of our listeners recall, was a National Book Award winner, and Professor Nunez is also on the creative writing faculty at Boston University. Professor Nunez, thank you for joining us. Very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So I remember when I was emailing you initially uh, about uh, appearing uh, on these brief interviews for writing sex, your initial comment was, well, I don't know that I have a, have a whole lot to say, <laughs> I have a whole lot to write about. But, I, but what I love about, about this series and about talking to writers such as yourself is that I love work that is really engaging with different forms of intimacy, with kind of expanding our sense of what is intimate with what we do with our bodies. And, and we might start with, with a book like The Friend, uh, which as hopefully many of our listeners know, is really about a um, uh, narrator who inherits uh, a dog from a former mentor and friend who has passed away. And it really is a love story about the dog. In, in significant ways. Um, and it reminds me so much, I think, of a work that you must have had in mind that I know you actually reference in the book, uh, the work of J.R. Ackerley, particularly My Dog Tulip. Yeah. So I'm wondering what prompted either the writing of that book or how do you understand that book as also a story of intimacy? Well, uh, when I started writing that book, um, because this is the way I, I work, I don't plan what I'm going to write ahead of time. Um, before I get started, I just jump in. And so the dog wasn't there in the beginning. Um, the, um, the story that, that, that was there at the beginning was the, um, the mentor and fr lifelong friend of this narrator who committed suicide uh, unexpectedly. And, she, and the narrator is the one who ends up with this dog. Um, but we don't learn that. I think we're already, you know, around page 30 before the dog appears. And that was when it, it occurred to me that I could, I could have this happen next, that she's left this dog. Um, and, and then I wanted to develop this relationship between the two of them, uh, which partly because, partly because they're both grieving. The, 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 they, they, they both have, I mean, the dog most certainly doesn't understand why, whatever happened to the person, to his best friend. All he knows is that that man just never came home again and it's affected him and he's depressed. Apollo, his name is. And she has known this man since she was very young and also doesn't know why, uh, why he's gone now. Uh, and so they're kind of sharing this grief and the grief is, is, is a large part of what, what brings them together. They don't start out uh, so, so, so well. The, the, the dog is very standoffish. You know, the dog ends up in her tiny apartment. Now I'm here, why am I here? And where is he, my best friend? And what's going to happen next? And she of course has just lost her best friend. So she's in mourning, but that, 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 that's, how they, that's how they draw close to each other. Um, also, she doesn't, because she is in mourning, she, she doesn't want to see anyone else. She doesn't want to talk to anyone else. She's not interested in, 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 in the consolations of, of, of friends. Um, so she's very withdrawn. And so she's almost, she's wholly dependent really on this dog for her emotional life at this moment. And he, of course, doesn't, doesn't have anybody but her. And I had read and been just, uh, you know, swept away by uh, My Dog Tulip and other Ackley writings. I mean, first of all, not, not just because of the subject matter, but he's a very, very, very gifted writer. Yeah. Um, and how, and this story that he tells uh, with such courage and beauty about, you know, a, a, a lifetime of, 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 of hooking up with different men and and, and searching for someone to fall in love with and it, it never working out and him totally then just giving up on the idea that he would ever have a partner. Mm. And then this dog, this, this dog also comes unexpectedly into his life. And he talks about how as soon as she was there and she was a really difficult, difficult, unpleasant in many ways, um, German Shepherd. 
uh, he talks about how once he had her in his heart and in his care, he had no interest in cruising anymore. He had found a wife. And then they have this life together. I don't remember exactly how many years, but then she sickens and when she's, when she's dying and he knows he's going to lose her. And, uh, and then he says, you know, I would have, I would have committed sati, mm -hmm. you know, if, when I lost her. What did I have no, you know, just as if he'd lost the dearest person he had lost, the dearest being in, in the world to him. And, and the rest of his life, you know, he just, he, he drank and drank and then he died. So it was just, so it was, it was an amazing love story, uh, incredibly beautifully told and not just in My Dog Tula, but in other wor work that, that he wrote. Uh, and I it was, that, that was always on my mind when I was writing about Apollo and, and my narrator. Oh, it's beautiful. And, and I love how you describe J.R. Ackerley and, and his work as really a, an unfortunately neglected writer. So I, I think a great gift of your of your book is that it introduces not only readers to to your characters, but also hopefully to Ackerley's work as, as well. I'm reminded that uh, Ackerley's descriptions are really a lot about um, sort of being embodied with the dog as well. They have a very intimate relationship, I'm not sexual, but, but he describes a lot of they're together as beings, as embodied beings. Yeah. They did, and she was, he would not have her fixed, as we say, yeah. spayed, yeah. You know, altered, all these words. He couldn't bear the idea. Um, so she was constantly in heat. Mm -hmm. So her heats, which were extremely sexual, obviously, and she went out without a leash. This is just, unimaginable they got so her sex life was a major part of his life yeah yeah that's fascinating but also the issue of grief which is so important to to your narr narrator and the friend uh also is an interesting hinge point to get to your most recent book what are you going through uh which is uh about hmm, how would one describe it the, the for, foreshadowing of grief, the, the ramp up towards grief, as the narrator in this case has been invited by a friend to, to stay with her in her final, in her final days. Uh, and another beautiful intimate portrait uh, in, in which the intimacy is in some ways generated out of grief. Uh, yes. The previous book, grief that's already, uh, grief at a relationship that's already passed, this at the impending loss of a, of a friendship. Um, and also a very intimate and embodied portrait. Um, what was the origin of this book for you? Well, once again, I, I got started on something. I was, uh, I was on a walk somewhere and it came to, it was time to write another novel. I wanted to get into something and it occurred to me to say, um, uh, you know, I, I, I went to hear a man give a talk and right. that was the first sentence. And then I thought, okay, Sigrid now, who's I, who's the man, what talk, where is she, all these things. And so then I, I came to the idea that this narrator who went to hear the talk was visiting an old college friend who uh, had cancer and was in the hospital and lived in a different town from her. Um, and then I, you know, I, I, I talk about other things in the, in the book. Um, then it came to me that this person's cancer uh, would, be, would become terminal. And, um, and then the friend of the narrator with the terminal cancer would, you know, well, what, I was thinking of it in terms of what would you do? What would you do if someone asked this of you? And what she asks the narrator, her friend, um, is to, she, she knows that she's dying. She has terminal cancer. She knows she only has a little bit of time, maybe a year or so. And she wants somebody to come and be with her during that time, you know, rent an Airbnb, go somewhere not too far away um, and be together in that house where she can do the last things that need to be done and have someone nearby. She's not asking the friend to administer the euthanasia drugs, which she happens to have, 
but someone to be there because she has just says, I have no idea what if something goes wrong? What if everything goes wrong? I have to know someone's in the next room. And so they do this and there they are together. And, you know, at a certain point, the narrator um, uh, mentions that she had read somewhere uh, that, that watching someone die is like falling in love which I, 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 that, ha that hasn't happened to me, but I, I really understood that I could really see that. And, and so I wanted, to, I wanted that to be a big part of the book. I, I, it, you know, in other words, I had to imagine what it would be like to be these two women. And I, it, just, you know, it just came to me that they would become intimate in a, in a way that, 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 was, that was like falling in love. And the thing is that these two women were not close friends, which is important. They were college friends. And you know how, and this is many years later, they're in their 60s. You know how it is with your college friends, so tight, but then the years, you know, you keep in touch, but you don't really, you, know, you fall, fall apart to, uh, away from each other to some extent. And that's what had happened to them. She, so they weren't close anymore. In fact, that was one of the reasons why the friend thought the narrator might be the right person, right. as opposed to, to, to her very close friends, who in any case had said, no, anyway, no, I will not do that. Um, so, you know, they, they haven't been close. Now they're in this house in this extraordinary uh, situation and they, be, they do, they become very close. Uh, and, and, and yet the, the inevitable is there. Uh, whether she ends up taking the drugs or not, she's going to die and die very soon. So it becomes kind of irrelevant actually whether she takes the drugs or not. Um, and so, the narrator has to prepare for that loss, um, or not prepare for it. She has to. She has to live live with it, and that that's that's what I was trying to understand what that what that might be like, and how because I also feel this very strongly. How when you watch someone die, you are watching yourself die too, mm -hmm. because you know that this is not a unique experience. Is that this is this is this is me too. I, I will be there too one time, one day. It, it, it's beautifully stated. One of the things that I think is important about, about both of these books together is that I, I wonder if you agree with this. I, I've often thought part of the reason why we live with animals is in part because they teach us how to die. Their, their lifespans are so much shorter than ours yeah. are. That, yes. that we, see their, we see the totality of their lives. And, and how, how they teach us in some ways how to die. And, and you're so close to them too. I know there's, I can't, I can't remember who it was who said this, um, life, seven dogs, and then you die. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> it's really, it's perfect, right? But it, but it, is, it is true, they do. You, you, you see that you see them, you know, you see the, the lifespan and then you, you do, most people do then get another dog and they see it happen over and over again. I, I agree, yes. A couple of other things very quickly about, about um, the book, What Are You Going Through? Um, two things come to mind. Uh, first is, it, and this is sort of a spoiler alert for anyone who's not read the book yet, but you, you talk about the intimacy that develops. They do become very close after having not, not been close for some time. Um, and there is something of a sexual relationship that develops between them, which, which I have to admit, when I read it, seemed both surprising and completely unsurprising all at the same time. And I thought that was actually masterful that, that neither one of these are women who are necessarily one is anticipating will, will uh, engage each other sexually, but that they do develop that intimacy. It seems right in so many ways. It, it seems right. And again, it's not something that I was thinking would happen, but just as you, it, just as you say, the story's growing, the relationship is growing. And I thought, well, what would happen? And I thought, you know, this, this would happen. This, yeah. I, you know, I mean, I, I just touch on it. I, I do want it to be there. It is there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they can't really do very much about it. I mean, this is, this is why, um, but it's it's what you keep the word you use is all right. It's the intimacy. It's the intimacy. It doesn't it doesn't really 
matter what kind of sexual acts happen or don't happen it's still sexual it's just this this intimacy they have and this need to touch um and this desire to touch and 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 to and to 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 to, to be so as close as one one possibly can uh at this time uh and and the um you know because the woman who's dying has a um you know, has a good sense of humor uh you know when she when she realizes they both seem to realize at the same moment what what, what you're talking about and so she's you know in her best betty davis accent you know she says you mean all this time we could have been lovers <laughs> <laughs> Which, <laughs> um you know again kind of like deflating the moment to some extent but but you know um but yeah they, they I, I to me it just seemed it just seemed inevitable yeah yeah that's be beautifully done i i will admit that when uh you know we've we've all been on on various forms of lockdown over the last many many months and uh when i was finally able to get into a bookstore and saw the copy of your book with the title what are you going through uh, you know, my heart melted immediately <laughs> because it's just such a wonderful title for this moment. Certainly you began working on the book, probably not having any thought that we would be in this strange protracted state. But Indeed, it, does, yeah. it seems like a very fitting book for this time. These two women, story of these two women going off basically into their own sort of quarantine. To yes, they're a pod. As a matter of fact, they they become a pod. I know it was it was strange because that's exactly you know they are in a kind of quarantine. She says, "I just want to be somewhere you know away from everything and peaceful." And and you know, I mean, part of what I was thinking of with the book is that she does she does have all these plans, um, and and the discovery is it's it's not it's not that easy. It's not that easy to die. You 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 have these ideas that you want to take control and things are going to be this way. But but uh, even though you're dying, you're dying. You're not dead. When you're dying, you're still living. So there's still life, and life is messy, and life gets in the way. Even of dying, life gets in the way. Yeah. Uh, final question: How has the quarantine been for you? Well, it, it's been, you know, I'm sure it's been easier than it's been for other people. I mean, you know, partly because I do spend a lot of time alone. Um, I'm used to, I'm used to solitude and I enjoy solitude and solitude is essential for my work. And, you know, given that I, I never became ill and that I'm in New York City and everything that I need, I can, I can get. You know, the stores, uh, you know, the, 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 the essential workers were working and grocery stores were open and so on. So there are many things that I miss and I think it's becoming, uh, you know, in many ways more difficult and not being able to see people and so on. But so much easier than, you know, I don't have, I, you know, I, I was able to teach remotely my, my little workshop at BU, which is not like teaching, you know, elementary school or high school remotely. So it really, it really hasn't been been bad. I mean, I'm right now. I'm just, I'm just much more. I, I feel, you know, disheartened by, um, by my, by by my fears about what's happening with the pandemic now. And you know, sometimes I think, is this, were we ever going to get, even with the vaccine, are we ever going to get to the other side of this? And the longer it it goes on, the the, the more pain painful it is. Um, so you know, let's hope that uh, you know that that, that that we'll be able to have enough people to take the vaccine uh, in order to achieve that herd immunity. Otherwise, we won't we won't really be be rid of it. So, um, but you know, I I really can't complain. It has not been so difficult for me the quarantine and the lockdown. We have another one. I think in New York we're going to probably have another lockdown in um, in January. I don't know where you 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 are in, in Southern California, yeah. So we're we're fairly fairly quarantined right now. Right, yeah, yeah. Very difficult where you are. Good time to read some books. <laughs> right. Well, that's the other thing is that you know that I I did have like many people I know I had trouble writing, of course, but I also had trouble reading for a while. Um, but I have that now, and since that's the main thing I want to do besides write. Um, 
that that is not taken away by lockdown and quarantine. So as I say, I'm very grateful for that. Likewise. We've been talking to Sergio Nunez, author most recently of What Are You Going Through? Professor Nunez, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me.